Hello again, everyone, and welcome back to Learn Linux TV. On this channel, we celebrate Linux, and if you're new to this channel, then welcome aboard. I'm a big fan of Linux, that's why I've created this channel. And if you are also a Linux fan like I am, then definitely click that subscribe button, you won't regret it. Now, I have my own business at this point. Learn Linux TV is not just a YouTube channel, it's also an education company. And I'm really proud of it. And I'm able to do this job because of you guys. But ever since I moved away from working for corporate America, I felt like the experience that I've had as a hiring manager, because I was one at one time, in addition to all the Linux related things that I've done, I have all this knowledge that I feel like would be a total waste if I didn't share it with you guys. So in this series, what I'm going to do is give you guys some tips on getting a Linux job or pretty much any other career related thing that has to do with Linux. I have a lot of information in this space and I wanna share it with you guys. So what I'm going to do is throw this video out there. If it does well, then I'll do more of these. Now, I'm really excited to dive into the topic at hand today and talk about career development. But before I do that, I need to thank the sponsor for today's video, Linode. Linode is a Linux-focused cloud server provider, so naturally, they're a great fit for this channel. If you want to brush up your Linux skills and land that Linux job, then setting up your own server on Linode's platform is a great way to do that. Using the URL that you see on the screen right now, you'll actually receive $100 in credit towards your new Linode account. And considering that they have Linux servers that start at just $5 a month, then you should be able to set up quite a few Linux servers within that credit. They have all the usual distributions available. So whether you're learning Debian, Ubuntu, Fedora, CentOS, even Arch Linux, they have all kinds of distros available on their platform. So you can spin up a server that runs your preferred flavor of Linux in no time at all. And considering that there's a bunch of tutorials on this channel that'll teach you everything you'll ever want to know about Linux and the fact that their platform is a great way to get sample servers set up that you can use while you're learning, it's a great fit for my audience and also a great fit for my business because the entirety of the web presence for Learn Linux TV runs on Linode. So definitely check them out. Use the URL that you see on the screen right now that helps support the channel that helps Linode understand that you heard about them from Learn Linux TV, and I would greatly appreciate that. So thank you very much to Linode yet again for sponsoring this particular video. They've sponsored countless videos on this channel. They've been a sponsor for a very long time, and I really appreciate it. Now, specifically in this first episode of this series, if it actually does become a series, again, you guys will help determine that. What I'm going to do is answer a question that I received some time ago from a viewer. And what that person wanted to know is whether or not they should apply to a job or a job posting if they don't have all of the requirements that the job posting is asking for. Now, as a quick aside, what I told that person was to actually apply to the job, that you don't always have to have every single bullet point taken care of when it comes to whether or not you should apply to a job. You should probably have most, but you definitely don't need to have all of them. But what I wanted to do was create this video to go into a little bit more detail about that because I feel like, you know, I gave that person an answer, it seemed to help them out, but that was one person. If I make a video, then, well, a lot of other people will benefit from that knowledge as well. Now, instead of clickbaiting you and making you wait until the very end of the video to give you the answer, I'll give you the answer right now. Well, I kind of already did, considering I just told you what I told that individual that was asking me the question. Now, when it all comes down to it, I've been involved in the hiring process for quite a few employees. And one thing I could tell you is that zero, literally zero of them had all of the skills that we were looking for on the job ad. Now that might be surprising to some of you, right? I mean, not one of them had everything on the list, really? Well, yeah, actually that's a lot more common than you might think. Now there's different schools of thought when it comes to this, actually. Hypothetically, if I did find a candidate that had everything on the list, I mean, they checked every single box when it comes to the things that we or the company is looking for, you might think that's a great thing, but it might not be. The thing is, when you're looking for a job, you want to make sure that you're looking for a job that you'll be happy doing. And if you start that job knowing everything there is to know about that particular thing that you'll be doing, then I don't know about you, but I think I would kind of find that boring, right? When you look for a job, 
you should absolutely look for a job that's going to contribute to your overall career growth. And if you already know everything, then what is there to learn? Well, nothing really, right? I mean, if you know everything, there's no room for growth. You're going to hit a ceiling on your very first day of employment. And that's not really a good idea. Well, okay, so if you don't have to have everything on the list, then why do the job ads say things like, you must have these qualifications to be hired? Well, they're certainly not going to tell you that they want three out of five or, you know, four out of seven or anything like that, because that might actually work against them. And a lot of underqualified people will apply to the job. But then a natural question might be then, if the candidate doesn't have everything on the list and they apply, wouldn't they also be underqualified? Well, not exactly. So as a hiring manager, there's several different things that we look at that's important when we select a candidate. One of those things is that we want to know that the employee has passion, that they will love doing their job, they will have attention to detail, and they will go the extra mile. But the thing is, if somebody knows everything already, will they go the extra mile? Or might they just feel like they know everything and, you know, be a little abrasive or maybe just not be all that pleasant to work with? Or maybe they might be super pleasant to work with, but they could end up being a little sad that there's nothing new to learn. So for me, and I know the majority of hiring managers out there will agree with me when I say this, passion is everything. We want an employee that's going to stick around. We don't want to go through the work of hiring somebody just for them to, you know, walk out the door in a week. So we want to make sure that the job is going to contribute to their career growth just as much as the employee, him or herself, wants to make sure that, you know, the same thing is going to happen, that it's going to contribute to their career growth. Now, everything I've said is all well and good, and it is true, you know, it's been my experience, but that really doesn't help us understand why we have, you know, bullet points on a job ad if the candidate doesn't need to have everything on that list. Now, where this goes from here depends on the company and the hiring manager. There could actually be something on that list that is absolutely required. I mean, sure, everything might be listed as requirements, but in actuality, maybe only two or three of those things are hard requirements, and the job ad is just not going to tell you which ones are more important than the others. So in that case, it's absolutely possible that if you lack a specific skill, you might not even get so much as a phone call. Maybe there is something on that list that is absolutely required and the hiring manager won't even have a conversation with somebody who doesn't have that skill. Now for you, the job candidate, that doesn't really tell you which of the bullet points weigh, you know, more importantly than the others. Of the 10 things or so that's being asked for, which ones are the core requirements or the strict requirements for that position? Well, you really don't know. And if they list everything as a requirement, then you could assume that everything is a requirement. But from my experience, that's never the case. No one really has everything on the list. It's just the way things are. But what we do want is somebody that has a passion to learn. So if I ask you, you know, it doesn't show here that you know Ansible that's on the list. So, um... Are you going to learn that? What's your story there? And then the job candidate might say, I've read about Ansible. I love it. I've been doing some study about it. And I'm very excited to learn this technology because I feel like this position will actually give me the opportunity to learn it. Now, that's a good answer. That tells the employer or the prospective employer that you have a passion to learn. So even though you don't have a specific thing on the list, if you have a passion to learn it, then, well, that holds a lot of weight. We want people that are passionate not just passionate about their ability to do the job, someone who's, you know, honest about the things that they don't know, but willing to learn the things that they don't know. And that'll get somebody a lot further than somebody who knows everything on the list. Another aspect is culture fit. Do we feel like that person's personality is going to be a good fit within the company? So for example, if I'm hiring for my company, Learn Linux TV, then I'm only wanting to hire people that are passionate about Linux. If somebody comes to the job interview, and let's just say they have three out of the five requirements, and they're like, yeah, I kind of like Linux. It's okay, I guess. I saw the salaries for that, you know, that job title, and it looks really good, and I want that money because, let's be honest, we all have bills, so that's why I'm here. I just want the money, and Linux seems like a good way to get that money, so I'm here to get that money. Now, that might actually be true, and something can be said of honesty, but something can also be said of, you know, being too honest. But I want somebody who's legitimately passionate about Linux and they have a desire to learn. So I'm not necessarily going to fixate on somebody that has every box checked. 
I want somebody that's going to be a good fit, that's going to have, you know, a benefit when it comes to working for the company. Like the company is going to offer them value. The person's going to learn and grow, feel like the job is helping them get to their career goal where they want to be. That's actually very important. So if you're ever looking at a job ad and you don't have all the skills that are required, you should still consider applying. But within reason, of course, if there's 10 different things that are being asked for and you have one of them, okay, that's a little bit too far here. Um, you probably shouldn't apply to that job. That would be a bad idea. But if you have half or two thirds or something, you know, I feel like that's fine. You could get the rest by just simply practicing and learning because that's what it's all about. But there's actually another benefit when it comes to applying to that job anyway. Even if you feel like you'll never get that job or you're just not all that confident about it, you could use that as an opportunity to practice your interviewing skills. I mean, if you do get the job and you wanted the job, then great. Even if you didn't feel like you had any chance at all of getting that job, but you actually do get the job, then that's awesome. But if nothing else, that's an opportunity, like I mentioned, to interview for the job and practice your interviewing skills. And that's worth something. Because if you practice your interviewing skills and keep that in practice, then when you do actually interview for the company that represents your dream job, you'll have all that much more capability to land a good interview. And that's really important. Anyway, the moral of the story is that no, you don't need to have everything on the list. You should have as many as possible but absolutely have a desire to learn and make sure you communicate that to your hiring manager. And you never know, you might just get that job. And I hope that you do. Working with Linux servers is among the most fun that I've ever experienced while working. So you're gonna love it. So hopefully this video has helped you guys out. And if it has, please click that like button. That'll help me understand whether or not you wanna see more videos like this one. And if you like this video and if enough people like it, I'll consider doing a follow-up I have actually three titles, including this one, that I have planned out. So I'll record the other two if you guys would like me to do so. And hopefully that works out. But anyway, let me know what you guys want to see on this channel. And I'll do whatever I can to make that happen. Anyway, thanks so much for watching. Again, I really appreciate it. And I'll see you in the next video.